Hello everyone, I'm Aisha Carter for PCR Online and we're coming to you live from AHA 2023 in Philadelphia. It's a pleasure to have with me today Dr. Peter Sinev from Belgium. Welcome Dr. Thank Sinev. You. Uh, Peter has just presented the results of Stream 2 one-year mortality data and we'd like to hear a little more about them. Tell us about the background and rationale and the results of this extended follow-up of yep. this trial. Thank you. So people with a STEMI, they need to undergo primary PCI as soon as possible. If the delay is anticipated to be more than two hours, you need to uh, uh, imagine a pharmacoinvasive strategy uh, as an alternative uh, if the delays are too long. If the delays are too long, you increase mortality rates as well. So there's a good incentive to do that. Yes. So we did test that in the Stream 1 trial. Uh, with full dose TNK, tenecteplase, we observed early on an excess in intracranial hemorrhages in the elderly patients. So we halved the dose in those patients. Uh, and we didn't observe any intracranial hemorrhages afterwards anymore. Uh, but that's not prospectively tested. So we tested that hypothesis, hypothesis in um, uh, elderly patients in the STEEP 2 trial. And we took 60 years of age as a, as a cutoff. Because Why we was that? Yes. So we uh, observed, uh, we, we went back to the ASCENT 1, 2, 3, 4 and the STREAM 1 trial uh, and saw that the intracranial hemorrhage risk really took off at age 60. Yeah. And so that's why we included patients above 60 years of age to include in STREAM 2. Yes. Uh, when they presented early, within three hours of symptom onset, um, and when they were not uh, able to undergo primary PCI within uh, one hour. We did observe um, uh, the uh, clinical endpoint at 30 days that was equal. We did observe uh, better ST segment deviation resolution, so better improvement of, uh, of infarct size yes. and microvascular uh, perfusion. And now at one year, we observed similar mortality rates uh, in patients in the two groups. So if to us, together with the 30-day data yes. and the reperfusion data on ECG, we, uh, we, uh, we think that uh, pharmacoinvasive strategy we have those TNK in patients above 60 years of age is a very, very good alternative to primary PCI. If that's you cannot go undergo primary PCI Absolutely. Early. That's a reasonable strategy. I think it's encouraging that the mortality data found no difference, but the key issue that most people have with tenecteplase is bleeding. Tell us a little more about your bleeding endpoints and the bleeding results at this one year study. So, so early on we saw, we observed in the pharmacoinvasive arm six intracranial hemorrhages. Uh, uh, strangely enough only in the sub 75 year of, years of age group um, and uh, most of them were um, due, at least what we think, due to uh, uh, protocol violations, excessive anticoagulation and uh, untreated uh, severe hypertension. Uh, and that are risks for, for intracranial hemorrhage. Yes. Uh, we did observe uh, a very low uh, risk of non-ICH major bleeding. Yeah. Uh, and that is due to that halving of the dose of TNK plus uh, uh, a better uh, approach, uh, radio approach, of, yes, of course, versus seven years ago. Yes. Uh, so it, to us, it's worthwhile to do. Something that I didn't mention in the, in the presentation is that uh, so the equal mortality is versus very well done primary PCI because the yeah. majority of patients in the primary PCI are, uh, underwent primary PCI within two hours. And we know from registries that this is not the case worldwide. That's right. So it's an ideal scenario. We think that there's a benefit for patients uh, presenting early uh, for, with the pharmacoinvasive strategy. I think that's, that's a very pertinent point about the timing and the time duration it took to primary PCI. Also, to go back to the bleeding, uh, how about the antiplatelet version that you used here and what was the rationale behind it? So we used uh, everyone aspirin of course. We yes. used uh, a loading dose of 300 milligram of uh, clopidogrel uh, which is uh, not in the, in the guidelines because there is no evidence for that. Uh, patients above 75 years of age were excluded from the pivotal uh, clarity trial. Uh, we, we thought it was, uh, uh, it made a lot of sense to do that. Uh, uh, and for several reasons. One is that uh, we decreased the doses of uh, TNK yes. uh, and that would uh, maintain uh, an acceptable bleeding risk, but also clopidogrel only works uh, within two, three, four hours and that's basically the timing where you will see the, the, the coronangiogram and the subsequent PCI done in pharmacoinvasive arm. Just to clarify, so 300 milligrams of loading was for everyone over 60 years, even over 75, irrespective of age. Exactly. Okay. 
also found some interesting results on the subgroup analysis. Would you like to comment on that, particularly related to the timing of the randomization and also in fact size? Right. So first, the fact size, we uh, saw uh, heterogeneity or an interaction uh, uh, for with um, a less uh, favorable outcome in patients with anterior wall infarction uh, in the pharmacoinvasive arm, uh, which is counterintuitive because uh, registries and, and trials before show that this is the population, early presenters with a large area at risk who benefit yeah. from earlier perfusion. Yes. So we, we're delving further into that and that will uh, be the, the subject of further investigation. Yes. Um, we did observe uh, improved outcomes in patients uh, in the pharmacoinvasive arm who were presenting very early after symptom onset, within one hour, the golden hour. Um, and that is uh, very consistent with observational data and data from clinical trials early on. So there, there is some benefit there. But there are other things that we need to figure out, whether it's not a chance finding. And, uh, Absolutely. Uh, and thank you very much for your time today. I think this is a very pertinent trial that gives a lot of data, not just for where it was performed, but most of which can be extrapolated to particularly lower middle income settings where uh, primary PCI is often not able to be given timely. So congratulations and thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you.